when it comes to gaming, it seems me and my friends never fail to mention this one video game as being a cut above the rest. Video game I had the most fun playing, Little Big Planet. Game that had the best active community, Little Big Planet. Best video game that coined the idea of user generated content while still making every bit of that process so satisfying and fun. I think you get the idea. Despite coming out of nowhere, Little Big Planet has the most sales of any PS3 game not made by a AAA company. This franchise has inspired kids like me to want to become a creator in this world from game developers, artists, engineers. No, no, a real engineer, no, no, not me. And what fascinates me is even after 10 years, we all seem to attribute our creativity and our craft to being nurtured and grown from this one piece of media. Why was this game special to millions of people? What inspired these developers to think so out of the box in a time where sandbox creation games didn't even exist? And why do I believe Little Big Planet is one of the most creative games of all time? This video idea couldn't have come at a better time in my life. Recently, I've been feeling I had spoken about everything I wanted on this channel. Creative dryness put me in a funk where I thought my time on YouTube was over. I had not touched Premiere Pro for days, weeks on end. So I decided I'd come back to one of the cornerstones of my childhood to feel something. So, Little Big Planet, let's see what you got. For the success of Little Big Planet's uniqueness, we gotta thank its predecessor. You've probably at least heard of it. This game was the first ever game published on Steam that wasn't made by Valve. And this game was... Ragdoll Kung Fu. Yes, this was the beginning of Sackboy's creation. And yes, this game looks very scuffed. But the dude who worked on this, Mark Healy, noticed a couple things that would change the trajectory of his life. Number one, character customization is really cool. It made the game feel that much more of a unique experience and it opened up his eyes to the world of user generated content. Number two, he really liked the team that helped him make this project. And after much deliberation, they realized if they were somehow able to join their ideas together into one game, they might create the best game of all time. And number three, they have to strike while the iron is hot. So this guy, Alex Evans, literally looks his boss in the eye on a flight to America like, and um, boss, um, I don't know how else to say this, but I'm thinking of quitting to start my own gaming company. They all got fired. <laughs> that allowed them to go balls to the walls deep into work on their first title. And it was this dude, Dave Smith, that created the bones of what Little Big Planet would become. A very, very basic physics platformer. All right, boys. So what do we do? And um, we should probably work on it a bit more. Let's sell it to Sony. What? What is this? It's our game, Yellowhead. You know, you jump around on this orange bowl and do things like jump and other things like move around on the orange bowl. Why would anyone play this? Quick walk, hit the button. This is what it's supposed to feel like. This is what we want players to feel. Take our money. None of that drum demo got into the final game. But Alex knew if he could just convey the feeling of that ecstasy of playing a song together to a guy that likes the drums, he would have Sony's attention on their idea of making this game that was centered around goofy moments shared with others. And they got the funding for six months. Six months of a creative bonfire to make a demo for Sony to fully support this game. I mean, I personally love this backstory so much because I can see this controlled chaos of energy is what fueled them to make something this different. And in a weird harmonic way, they found that intersection between all their interests. Alex Evans with his love of textured objects and creating this mini tactile world handcrafted by knickknacks you'd find in the drawer. Dave wanted this physics platformer that involved grabbing, jumping and moving at its core gameplay. Kareem wanted a certain mysticalness and otherworldly composition to the game. And Mark wanted a game about making games. Simply put, he wanted all the resources they used to make the story mode to be available to anyone who'd want to play. And this infinite cycle of creating, sharing and playing was born. Do you see where this is going? From its creation, Little Big Planet was all about creativity and bursting open that box of ideas into a world where ideas could exist and flourish. This was the beginning of the universe Little Big Planet would be in. This was the beginning of Craft World. 
I think the world building of this game is pretty cool. The concept that when we give up on our dreams, ideas, and creativity because of life, they have a home somewhere. They combine with other people's dreams and become something tangible, something real. A little big planet. At least, you know, it would be called that if they even had any time to think of the title. <laughs> time was not on their side, and the amount of changes and iterations to get anything playable to Sony was an almost impossible task. And after six months, it was finally time to show the gatekeepers of their dreams what they had made. They suddenly said in February or something, we're going to announce this game big at GDC. Incredibly nervous because they were like, we're announcing a big game at GDC with a game studio that's not even um, in contract. And I'm like, there's got to be 10,000 seats there. Somewhere in the distance through the fog, you could see the stage. And then on the stage, there's all these like life-size props that have been made from our demo, like the tree and the football. And I'm like, God, this is like, what the hell's going on, man? I'm really excited to be here and show you this. It's awesome. On behalf of the whole team as well at Media Molecule, Mark and I want to introduce you to this awesome game. It was a double act with Alex and that he did most of the talking because I couldn't hear myself. All I could hear was my heart going... It's horrible. Oh my God, like this is actually a really big moment. You know, like there's all these journalists with their badges and they're all from like fancy magazines and websites. This isn't about um, separate complicated tools. This is about empowering players to make whatever they want to do. I think there should be some audio here, actually, as well. I don't know if we can, um... There's always one who lets the team down, and it... Let me, let me show you how it's done. Let me show you how it's done, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> You could tell it was a good vibe going on. People were laughing a little bit, and uh, yeah. And I think the climax that I remember is when we sort of went off the end on a skateboard and took a photo. That was the sort of like everyone stood up and just like. Ooh. Time for a, a photo. Smile. There, there we go. Let's take a photo. Giving me goosebumps thinking about it. The comments, and we ordered champagne and popcorn. So it really felt like it gave us a moment as MM to suddenly be known as a studio that was making something interesting. The high of good reviews was short lived. But we admitted that we'd made something hilarious but impossible to create with. And we'd had to cheat and make the level using a PC based tool. The thing we've got to do between now and ship, make it so that we don't cheat and that we can make this level to this quality and the whole game to quality. For example, the original game was going to have an infinite amount of layers while the released version had a sum of three. I think this was a good play because with strict rules they adhere to, working with what they have is way simpler. They added new controls to reshape and move objects. And my favorite feature of all, they added the fact was that you could slap some sense into other players. The beauty of Little Big Planet was that there was always something to play. And to kids that maybe only got one game a year, this was unbelievable. I was that kid. It was unbelievable to me. But did users cling to the new idea straight away? I mean, gamers are notorious for dropping a game the second it leaves their comfortability gaming sphere. How did they know any of this would be received well? Well, <laughs> they didn't. They just made tools and mechanics that was easier for them to create and hope people would see the potential at their fingertips. That's a gambling man's game. So they asked some programmers to try it out and they were making the most basic, the most boring levels known to Little Big Planet. However, you know, they tried again. This time they didn't ask game developers to play a game about game development on their off hours. They gave it out to the public. Within a week, there were levels better than ours. And on the 18th of October, 2008, Little Big Planet was delayed due to controversies. They had some Islamic soundtrack in it. What the? And on the 27th of October, 2008, Little Big Planet was released and the whole world blew up with creativity. The game was highly received, but Media Molecule knew they were missing things that would allow players to transcend the idea that every level had to be a platformer. Yes, there were a lot of resources, but looking back, they were all physics-based resources to do with more jumping, grabbing, and movement. If they truly wanted the creativity to be limitless, 
they needed to remove the limit. I mean, what Little Big Planet won was was a spark, a catalyst for the dev team to refine their thoughts and build up what it means to have a game that relied on UGC. And in 2011, just two years after his first game had launched, Little Big Planet 2 was released. And surprisingly, it was leaps ahead of the first one. I mean, the sheer amount of added content and resources felt like they had learned what they liked in Little Big Planet 1 and doubled down on it. They added more power ups and actual story mode with a villain and voice acted with side characters who'd follow you. The universe that was Craft World was starting to feel like something meaningful. Each world of the story mode was aesthetically based rather than culturally based, who, you know. <laughs> avoid some issues. They added AI robots you could give commands to, dress up as actual characters, and make them the star in their own mini movies. I mean, the community was given an inch and went miles beyond the developers' expectations. Little Big Planet 2 didn't need outside mods or added content from fans. The creators constantly fed more tools, more supplies to allow players to create to their heart's content. Games like Minecraft, Terraria, or most other popular sandbox games didn't exist back then. So it's maddening that Little Big Planet 2 did this all on their own. I mean, at this point, it didn't feel like there was anything you couldn't create. Because there wasn't. My personal experience with this game was that it was all I wanted to play when I was young. It was all any of us wanted to play when they were young. The amount of bomb survival, shark survivals, and in-depth mini games I played a thousand times over is still unbelievable to me. Me and my siblings would go to bed thinking about how much fun we had and wake up the next day ready to do it all over again. The community found constant glitches like the glowing skeleton glitch, the unrendered fix me hook hat material that later became such a meme that the developers created a fix me hook hat t-shirt you could buy in the store. In every shape and form, this community was always finding new things to exploit and have fun with within the game. And as long as it wasn't game breaking, it felt like the dev team promoted this idea of pushing the envelope. There would be a section called MM Picks, which were the levels the developers themselves played and really enjoyed. And at the end of the year, there was this big YouTube award show hyping up the best levels of that year. For lack of better terms, Little Big Planet's community understood the assignment that everything in the game constantly nudged you to create levels and play them with each other. And speaking of players, LBP was one of the first few games as a kid I genuinely had just as much fun playing with randoms as I did with friends. With the dive in feature, you could jump into another's playthrough and work together and I don't know if it was because we were still in the early stages of online multiplayer but back then everybody was more than welcome to play with randoms and we wanted to share these memories together in any way we could. And that was really the beauty of this game, customizing your experience and anything that deviated from that would ruin the franchise. LBP3 came out in 2014 as the next big installation of the franchise, promising us new mechanics, more tools to create, and a promising future for the LBP community. The game was terrible. Like, I mean, unplayable, laggy, soft locking, memory destroying, multiplayer killing. Terrible. I mean, okay, upon further research, I realized my whole childhood I was lied to. I was told LBP3 was bad because Media Molecule wasn't working on it, and that this new company, Sumo Digital, the team that made Sonic Racing, fumbled the bag on one of my childhood goaded games. The reason why LBP was considered one of the weakest out of the three was due to the insane crunch of getting the game released for the holidays, resulting in another Sonic 06 incident where the game was nowhere near finished when it came out. Sony, what is wrong with you? Behind all the glitches and bugs, you can see Sumo Digital had a lot of good ideas. They had the vision, they designed the most FWB of the world. That, along with the huge delay in fixing these bugs, resulted in LBP3 being a too little, too late kind of case in the fans' mind. It's fine. I'm sure the remnants of the community will fall back to LBB2. The servers for Little Big Planet 1, Little Big Planet 2, and Little Big Planet 3 for the PlayStation 3 as well as PlayStation Vita, would be shutting down for good. Wow. Now thousands of levels that made LBP what it is was gone forever because the original servers are gone and unplayable on the current servers on LBP3. 
Despite desperate pleas from the community, it seemed the old levels would be lost in the annals of time, only existing in the minds of everyone who played it. But once again, this is where the level of commitment this community has for this game still amazes me. Little Big Planet Union was a community of developers and designers determined to salvage the online space that is Little Big Planet. Originally just a clan of creators who messed around in 2011, it became an international platform for stragglers trying to connect with other LBP players. Project Lighthouse, an idea that would create private servers in order to play the old UGC levels. And I get it, this is a monumental task for people who are doing this for free, maybe damn near impossible. And upon research, it seemed the game broke a lot. But in 2024, I booted it up and it worked. My favorite levels growing up, the bomb survival, Jeff the Killer, Ransack, it was all there. I got transported right back to 2012 and you're probably thinking, what about the online play? Is it gonna work? Well, hopefully it works. It worked. This is so crazy. Hold on, this, nah, what? I actually can't stop smiling now, that's, it actually works. People are still on this game. People are still making stuff. Never have I been so impressed by a single community of creators. But then again, if there was going to be a community to have the determination to keep their favorite game alive and intact, it would be Little Big Planet, would it? Did. <laughs> Little Big Planet from the beginning was about empowering players to create. So we had a community of people who were out there using exactly the same tools that we were as professionals, doing things with the game that we didn't think were possible. We knew we needed to get some of that talent. They ushered me into the interview room and said, did I have any work to show them? What John had created was so amazing. He was bending our Little Big Planet in ways that we didn't think it was possible. When I eventually finished and I slowly looked back, half the company was looking at me kind of like this and then everyone just got up and gave me a standing ovation. This further reminded me why I love this franchise and why I love this game. Little Big Planet was a game about creating, sharing and playing. So creating the tools and the resources to make cool games was good, but it wouldn't be as successful as it was if not for the novelty of enjoying every single step of that process with friends locally or online. As Media Molecule goes on to pursue other interests going even deeper into the UGC bag, it is still Little Big Planet that was the first in my memory to balance this idea of create your own sandbox game with the idea that it could be PvP, PvE, you name it. I mean, the world is called the Wonder Plane, a place where dreams, ideas, and creativity can fester and grow and become something more than just ideas. There's a reason why every single level, every single idea is considered canon to Craft World. Because in the least cringy way, we are Little Big Planet. We added to that ethos, that world. I'm 23 years of age and re-watching this intro puts a lot of things into perspective. I think about my life thus far from school, relationships, projects I've worked on, all the things I've dared to wonder about or thought about making and how I felt life wouldn't let me do the things I wanted due to circumstances. I think about how I started viewing my channel less of a place to connect with others over things I loved and more of an algorithm business to grab a check and play it safe. And just how that mindset almost made me think I had run out of ideas to talk about. I know now, whenever I'm feeling creatively bankrupt or life is trying its best to beat the wonder out of me, I can rely on this game to pick me back up. In this twisted, cursed world we live in, we are constantly given the option to let go of these dreams, to stop our imaginations. And I mean this in the most serious way, guys. This game breathes life back into me that there is this world where all of our dreams float away to when we don't act upon them. And the key to how I want to live my life is just bringing that world back to the here and now. No matter what, one of the most fulfilling, rewarding things in this world is tapping into that inner child, that deep love for wondering and dreaming. And instead of letting those dreams drift away, bring my own little big planet to my own life. And I wouldn't have thought this way if not for this sack boy and the memories from playing one of the most creative games I've ever had the pleasure of playing. For some people who never grew up on this game, 
they might dismiss this as just another goofy sandbox game. But everyone that played it, we knew it was different. We got to be part of Little Big Planet. Scenes, fantasies, ideas. And where do they go when life brings you tumbling back to the now? One by one, they drift away to the cosmic imagosphere. From the atomic to the galactic, they dance and they whirl unfettered by worry and concern. The heavenly ballet of the wonder plane. And sometimes, this dance creates something astonishing. Out pops a transcendental dream verse, a remarkable place where the real meets the fantastic. And this vast expanse of imagination has a name. They call it Little Big Planet. Yo, if you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. I'm taking this time to announce the beginning of my patreon <laughs> give me your money you guys don't see a lot in the background um for most for this video i got away with it for this video i got away with it but usually these videos get copyrighted or demonetized because of copyright music but for the sake of the edit and how i want certain things to go i'm usually willing to risk it and sometimes i'm able to dispute it and get it back um it made me realize i kind of want to get paid for the stuff i'm doing if not even just a few book -aroonies. I'll do a smaller video, proper hard launching the Patreon and the channel in some time. But yeah, if you ever felt some kind of way of my videos and you've been touched, you've been connected, you've enjoyed them any kind of way, and you want to support your boy, throughout this month, I'm going to be pumping it with content, with editing tutorials, things I've learned from YouTube so far, being still the small time content creator it is, and some questions and answers. So if you had any of these questions at all, you might want to subscribe to the Patreon, but it's mostly to support your boy, all right? By God's grace, I can be footed so well, I don't even have to care about copyright with other videos and whatnot. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.